All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our quick 30 minute webinar. My name is Phil Corbin, sales and marketing director here at Verify. I'm here today with Dave Deshek, VP of business development. And in today's webinar, we're going to cover the latest and greatest iteration of our partner portal. We'll also cover a popular feature for those customers who have Contact Center Express or UCCX. It's our fully customizable real time UCCX wallboards and also reporting. We're going to start off by showing you the new partner portal and also get into what is UCCX, what are wallboards, and how by using them, your customers will gain visibility into their contact center. We'll cover the full Verify stack, all of our current features available, and also by using them, you're really providing a positive business outcome and making an impact within your customer's organization. We're gonna pause for Q&A, get some of your questions answered. During the demo, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel at the bottom right of the screen. After the Q&A, we'll reward one lucky attendee a $50 Amazon gift card, so hang around to see what you may have won. All right, a quick overview of our new partner portal. You can access it at verify.com slash partners. Um, what you need to do is log in with your email and password. If you don't have a, an account, you can register and please reach out to your account manager to get your account number. Uh, within the new partner portal, once you're all logged in and, and logged in there, you'll, you'll see deal registration. Uh, by accessing the new portal, you can uh, register deals. This program is designed to reward and protect you for your opportunities you develop and introduce Verify. Deal Reg helps us protect your pre-sales relationships and minimize conflicts between competing partners and our own direct sales teams. Uh, the 2020 SPIF program. So we are offering a SPIF to any solutions architect who introduces Verify to their client. You can earn up to 4% when you register a deal. So talk to your account manager about our 2020 SPIF program. Partner webinar series. So a big focus on the new partner portal is helping our partners grow and succeed with their business. So we're going to be hosting an ongoing partner focus webinar series, just like today. Sales materials. So all partners will have access to sales materials, sales enablement tools, data sheets, customer success stories, business outcomes, and use cases. We're also happy to offer training and enablement to all partners. Um, so again, reach out to your AM and we can get you trained up. All right, logging into the partner portal. Again, uh, when you go to verify.com slash partners, you're going to be presented with a um, username and password field. So it's usually your email address and your password that you use to get into verify.com. If you do not have a, an account, uh, please register your account. If you do not know your account number, please contact your account manager and we'll send that account number over to you. You can get all registered and then log into the partner portal. All right, so with that, let's take a look at the Verify stack and also learn a bit more about UCCX wallboards and reporting. We have Dave here to tell us more. Dave, take it away. Thanks, Phil. Um, hello, everybody. Um, we at Verify moved to the Verify stack about a year ago. And the reason we did that is to really condense the offer and let our partner community as well as the end customers understand that we are more than just reporting analytics or UC tools. And behind that, it gives you a great opportunity to open discussions with, with the end customers in the sense that if you're doing an opening C-suite um, presentation and you want to distinguish yourselves from other people in the marketplace, whether they be other Cisco partners or other manufacturers, here's a great opportunity to show how you can actually get to a business outcome. Uh, a lot of times in these discussions, whether UC-based tools or other, you can get a, somebody in the audience to say, hey, that's a great idea, what if? Uh, so you're feeding the thought process at that level. Um, it's usually not more than a couple of bullets in a slide or a slide by itself, depending on the audience and the account that you're pursuing. But again, reporting and analytics, huge combination uh, that you could have a lot of traction with at the street level, create a lot of buzz, maybe not so much at the C-suite level, but definitely as you step down to go deeper and wider, 
once you've qualified, uh, this is a great opportunity to go in there and start talking and actually showing them if you had to uh, through a proof of concept. Um, the remote uh, tool sets uh, for remote phone, change management, the dial plan, these are great tools, again, to help show the uh, CIO or other IT management that you guys have standardized on tools, uh, both in-house and you're sharing those recommendations with them so that you can start to decrease the proliferation of personal tools that engineers like to use and have a common bond between the two. So if there is a problem, you can go back and use um, change management as an example, and you're familiar with it, the customer's familiar. So again, a lot of potential here for creating a lot of discussion, a lot of buzz, and also leading into potentially the business outcomes that customers may or may not uh, understand. <clears throat> so this is really about competing, and the competition is obviously to engage early in the process, uh, which you guys are doing as a business partner, as a trusted advisor, as a market uh, expert. And in doing that, again, you're talking to all the different buying centers. So this is, again, an expansion of something I just said on the previous slide, is taking the um, ver verify stack to your right and taking the components out of it and having the appropriate discussion with the business center that is uh, in front of you. Uh, a lot of times they have great ideas, but they can't articulate that to an outcome. And I think in creating that discussion with the to using the tools that we present to the right, it's an opportunity for them to uh, get stickiness to the concept to help articulate what they really want in a manner that you can turn around and deliver. And then you start focusing on the business outcomes. And the details and the demos really matter in this case, in the sense that um, Obviously, we all do demos. Um, most of us are pretty good at it from a from an organization level, uh, driving it home. But if we understand what the business outcomes or at least the business requirements are, we could turn those into outcomes for you. One step better than that, in most cases, we will offer free of charge a 30-day evaluation or proof of concept of our applications. And it could be one application like um, Contact Center Express with uh, wall boards. It could be a combination to add uh, the CDR reporting call analytics to it, so you have both the UC side and the contact side, plus the wall boards. Or we could do it all, depending on who you're talking to and what you need to demo or um, provide vetting to, so that you get ahead in the process. Most organization organizations obviously don't do that. Uh, this is a unique thing for Verify, and it'll be a unique thing for you as a partner to show the transparency between the relationship of Verify and you as the partner so that you can be competitively positioned. Most people, again, won't go down that road. And all of a sudden, now you're on a different track. You're earning a, another level of trusted advisor status. You're also proving uh, in what I would call black and white reporting back to the C-suite of what you can actually bring to the house, whether it's a uh, perpetual license type scenario where it's premise based and they want to manage everything you want to bring this back into a managed services environment maybe this is part of your standard offer once you've uh, vetted this internally with the teams and you want to say hey we could give you analytics on the uc side for x pennies per phone or x dollars per phone depending on what you're putting together or hey, what if i was able to position contact center express using uh, a different reporting structure than CUIC, and I can make it easier, faster, better, uh, more horsepower. And I'll demo for it right now. Um, and then you can bring to the power of, to the table of remote phone control where you can actually touch phones uh, via the network, whether you're doing um, modifications, you're troubleshooting a uh, particular call that somebody's on and they're having bad QoS or what the case may be. Uh, you also have the capability of deal dealing with ITL type search modifications or deletions. Change management is a snapshot of what's going on in the network in the last 24 hours. So if there is a trouble ticket and you have to go back and research it, this is a case where you could actually only have to maybe go back 24 hours, do a compare, see what changed, who changed it, and then uh, have a faster resolution. Again, presenting back to the customer a well-oiled machine uh, from your managed services or your support perspective. 
we just <clears throat> excuse me, released a new dial plan capability where we're monitoring all the DIDs. You no longer have to manage those through a spreadsheet. We can actually put this into a piece of software. So when you spin up a new uh, request for a new phone number, you get the DNs, you get the DIDs automatically managed for you, uh, presented to you if you need two or three of either one. And you can then manage that ongoing. So again, you don't have to worry about somebody maintaining a spreadsheet or making sure it's up to date or did they update it from the last change. These are all tools that are very easily conveyed back into the customer. Uh, it's appreciated by the customer in many cases and you great story. So here's the case of leveraging your ecosystem, verify. It, you can do one, you can do all, you can do a combination or set a roadmap where you start off with CDR, reporting and call analytics and somebody in IT likes the capability of remote phone or change management, that could be a phase two sale. Or if we could help you set up for a contact center sale uh, with our capabilities of doing or addressing the needs around hunt groups and things of that nature, showing the value of that type of reporting and then demoing um, what we could actually do on the contact center express side alongside of what you're demoing of what contact center express physically can do for their environment. So leveraging the ecosystem, looking at the full stack of what we bring to the table, uh, I think it's a huge uh, contributor uh, to your success moving forward. I think it's an ability to have a continuing discussion with different groups within the organization, tying pieces together so you have a unified message. And show yourself, your team, and the customer that you may actually know more than you, you think you do because once you start to have these conversations, it becomes part of your normal dialogue and it's part of your DNA and all of a sudden you're much broader in your offer as a consultant, as a uh, business transformation manager um, to what it brings to the table and you start to set the stages for what the competition has to sell against. I, I think most people in the Cisco world know what one another can bring to the table is really around professional services that would distinguish you the difference. But here's an example where you take the extent uh, professional services, put SKUs against some of these uh, features like uh, change management or remote phone control and get additional revenue, um, build in a solid story around your professional services offerings and make yourself a player that people have to look up to or at least compete against and most people are not ready to do that. So talk to us, talk to your account managers for Verify, from Verify rather, and to, to help them, help, let them help you take this to another level. And really, no competitor has the perfect solution, but as you discuss it with the customer on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you start to develop that particular uh, solution around their needs. And we have a great deal of experience just like you do in ver in various verticals and we understand the verticals of healthcare versus of finance versus sled and we could talk in those terms relative um to the needs to the, demonstrate the value and, and the potential return on the value and more importantly we can help them feel comfortable that we understand their world so think about putting this all together and really what it means an outcome is really looking for a way to change their business environment, especially around performance tied to metrics. And we have a very robust engine that can be um, very deep in its delivery uh, of content, or it could be very simple. And a lot of that's done through um, dashboards and reports, depending on what the different business units need. And at the end of the day, we can actually show the uh, ability to measure what the outcome really is, whether it's cost related, time related, things of that are very um, centric to the individual customers that you're dealing with. So next, here are two examples of customers that had specific business outcomes that they were looking for. Our first one with interstate battery is pretty straightforward. Uh, we went in there with a proof of concept, um, knowing what they potentially wanted and surprised the heck out of these guys because they saw a detail that they, they did not see with the native uh, product that's associated with UCM. Uh, they also looked at competitive situations where they saw the way we, our user interface um, compared to other competitors are totally different and it's very easy to use and very um, self-reliant and again, showing them real returns on it, uh, the detail, the savings potential, same with Carolina Cat. Here's another case where a proof of concept or a pilot took place 
and we start identifying issues, in this case, with a contact center script. Probably something you wouldn't normally find with embedded tools that you nat natively get from the manufacturer. Um, we also started to identify places of, of potential savings, like they're over-trunked on SIP. I was, as we all know, many of the SIP providers will go in there with an assumption. Uh, the assumption is on the high side. The customer usually loses on a uh, recurring monthly basis as far as what the costs are, are. And here's a chance for them to actually try and manage that a little better uh, so that they are within a reasonable percentage of where they think they need to be, 10%, uh, 15%, whatever the case is, and that results in significant savings for the customer. This is just a quick snapshot of what we deliver on the contact center express side versus the call manager side. We get into all the stuff that's typically found within CUIC, whether it's queue-based, agent-based, performance statistics. Uh, obviously, we could talk about the number of calls handled and abandoned, average talk time. We could take this and export it into a third-party uh, spreadsheet where you might do additional calculations that would not normally be available within CUIC. On the call manager side, this is really a case of where we can get in here and um, just give different business units an idea of what's going on. And whether they have a contact center or express or not, we could actually get into um, hunt groups. We could do the big picture and show performance data around capacity planning and other types of um, measurements for performance, uh, for data performance. Something very critical in many cases, they want to see the journey, the customer experience of when a customer enters the company, however they choose to enter it through the phone system, whether it's contact center or through UCM, all their stops within their journey and actually get a picture of what went on with those guys. So cradle grave is a huge component of, uh, that we often speak to. Um, and then as we speak to these, um, from points in a presentation or a demo, customers start to loosen up and start to ask questions based on their real-time experiences in their production environment. And we're able to show what we could do to alleviate some of their bottlenecks, some of their concerns, some of the other issues that they face. And that's all being, and then that's all followed up through a typically a proof of concept or a pilot. And it's an instant sale typically in 30 or 45 days on average by time we get everything set up uh, to the time a PO is issued to you. And when I say getting set up, that's another key indicator of just how easy we are to work with. Um, if I was to say we were a light application to, to uh, mimic one of my engineer's uh, statements, um, it's often a case of understanding that we can bring something as simple as the customer setting up a um, VM host, downloading a OVA from our portal, follow the instructions, and they could pretty much set up the pilot themselves once they have the uh, OVA downloaded in less than 20 minutes. But typically we get involved at the point the um, there's confirmation that the VM host is set up. And then secondly, um, help them if they haven't already downloaded the OVA and just start the relationship right there and build a invite and what typically we invite uh, work with the data teams um, or IT and we inv they then invite the BU the business units that are interested in the package and say look what we just found this is incredible let's talk about how this is going to impact your world moving forward and there's often a buy-in within a week or two once the B business units get comfortable with using the software and actually spending time with the dashboards and the reports and mimicking, in many cases, something very similar to what they're already living with or that they're not comfortable with and seeing the difference of what we deliver versus what the customer uh, is experiencing with the legacy system. This is what our business outcomes are really based on. It's living experience of developing that relationship with your prospects, with your customers. There's, you know, often Cisco is calling for a refresh of the UCM, get them up to 12.5 uh, in normal production and whatever the current productions might be for CCX. Here's an opportunity to refresh the existing um, solutions that they might have for third-party apps. Um, we have a very high success rate in replacing these uh, third-party apps or going head-to-head -head with a new deployment uh, so that the customer can actually make an educated decision. A lot of times, here's two examples. We um, recently 
worked with a large international insurance company. Initial deployment was 6,000 users using uh, UA Flex Plan or ELA uh, Flex Plan. And doing that, we um, there were three vendors. There was Verify and two others. Um, we were the first one up. Customer was a little grumpy, kind of said, yeah, yeah, that's all good. I like what I see. I need to talk to two others. He started a discussion with one other, ended that abruptly and never looked at the third one. Uh, we're dealing with a large government contractor um, where, again, Verify was the first up. And the uh, end customer fell in love with our analytics and UCM reporting. Also liked the idea of remote phone and DID management, but his budget wasn't allowed allowing for it because they were in the middle of a lot of mergers and expanding their Cisco uh, presence in the new companies. Um, the interesting part is my engineer and I spent uh, about 60 minutes on the phone with the end customer. We ended at 12 noon Eastern by 1.30 Eastern. We got a call from a par their partner said, I need a quote for uh, X, Y, and Z, and this is for company A. We got a PO in a week. I mean, this is the power that we could bring to the table for you guys. It's impactful. It's an easy decision. It helps you, uh, again, establish yourself uh, either as the existing trusted advisor or repositions yourself as that or brings you in as a trusted advisor because they can start to see instant impact on that simple decision that's not as, as expensive as a, a full-blown uh, UCM implementation or CCX implementation and help you sell that position. So that's what we do at Verify. Um, we are very partner friendly, even though we do have a direct sales force. Um, some people just don't want to deal with partners or go through partners for certain purchases. So we have that direct opportunity for us to uh, work with everybody. Um, here's, a comp here's a compilation of what we do within Wallboard's Contact Center Express reporting analytics again this matches up very nicely against cuic uh, we all know we that many of you and the customers have their challenges with cuic especially if you go into premium um, here's a chance to show a difference uh, or if you have to sell that plus this uh, depending on what the customer's cost tolerance are uh, i will share one of these uh, anecdotes with you when we released this about a, the new current version about a year and a half ago um, we did some partner comparisons or testing uh, and we saw real live data that went through our uh, beta version of the software um, we were able to process several hundred megs of data within a minute or two uh, which is a lot different than what i understand that typically takes place within ccx we also didn't have the report size limitations, whether it be ad, uh, ad hoc or regular, which I think ad hoc is about 3,000 rows in a report, 8,000 rows in um, the normal reporting. We came up in one case with 20,000 rows of, of content uh, within seconds or minutes, depending, and I don't remember the details behind it, so I apologize. But this is the power that we bring to the table, and there's a lot of flexibility uh, in the content we have, and if we can't put that content into a usable format, we certainly can work with the customer to work with spreadsheets and things of that, like that nature. Because if we can't do it, more than likely CUIC is not doing it. So um, we are somewhat dependent on Cisco's content to help manipulate the data and, and move it around. So that pretty much concludes my piece of, oh, one last piece, um, CCX reporting. I did, we, the customer and one of our engineers did a Google search. And this is the end result. They put in CCX reporting, and we are the fourth listing under, behind Cisco. So that tends to show you what the capabilities of our system are. Um, and we can bring a lot to bear based on our recognition within the marketplace and within Google searches as one example of being a recommended platform for Contact Center Express. So that is my last slide before I turn this over to Vic. Vic. All right, thanks, Dave. Uh, so we had some good questions come in, so I appreciate everybody's feedback here. Um, we're going to go ahead and address some of these questions. Um, one of our questions is from William. Um, William asked, "Is how is Verify licensed? Um, 
Well, we've got for a couple different modules, William. Um, if we're specifically talking about the UCCX side of things um, or the call center side of things, um, it's licensed by agent, um, not necessarily concurrent agent, by, but by agent's provision within that, uh, that call center. Um, if we're looking more towards the call data or the call manager side of things, that's licensed based on endpoint. Um, so hopefully uh, that answers your question. Um, next question we'll go ahead and take a look at is um, a question from Mike. Um, uh, Mike had asked, um, how do I get my Verify account number? Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to send that over to Phil. If, Phil, if you want to go ahead and handle that one. Yep. If uh, you do not have your account number and you're trying to register to Verify.com to access the partner portal, you can reach out to your account manager or you can also reach out to sales at Verify.com and we'll send you your account number and you'll be able to log in. Great. Thanks, Phil. Um, all right. Just kind of looking through our list here. Um, another question we had, um, and this is a good question. Uh, this is a question that came from Cody. Um, Cody asked, how do we compare to the CUIC reporting? Um, it's kind of a long question, Cody. Um, there's there's quite a few differences. Um, just to kind of hit a few of the you know the higher notes. Um, uh, one, we you have no limitation for our reporting. Um, in other words, CUIC current has currently has a limitation of about eight thousand rows or so. Um, sounds like a lot, but when you're looking at uh, you know state details or call detail and things like that on a single report, it's very easy to exceed that eight thousand rows. Um, so you know one of the things that we highlight is we do not have that limitation. A um, couple other things, um, security um, from the CUIC versus Verify perspective, uh, we look at security much different. If you want to be able to give access to Verify to uh, a manager or a, a CSQ manager or uh, just an employee, you can actually provide them a login where they can log in to Verify and are only allowed to see the criteria that you give them. So unlike CUIC where you actually have to build a report and then give them only that report, um, from the Verify perspective, we say here you can have access to certain modules or certain end users or certain agents and, and we give them access that way. Um, we also have shareable dashboards, um, you know, uh, via our permalink. Um, and, you know, one of the other big ones that I hear a lot when I'm doing demos and presentations is um, – uh, the ability to report um, reasons, um, you know, custom reasons, not just codes. Um, that seems to go over well with managers who really have no idea what, you know, custom reason code one, two, three, four, or something of that nature, nature are. So we can report the actual reason and custom reasons behind that. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, or another great one from Jim. Um, uh, uh, Jim, uh, Dave kind of touched on this. Jim had asked, um, how long does it really take to spin up a proof of concept? Um, we are an extremely light system, Jim, um, so it's extremely easy. It really takes us about 15 to 20 minutes to spin up an entire proof of concept. Um, that's going to be CDR reporting if you're interested, as well as UCCX wallboards, widgets, and dashboards, and things of that nature. So a pretty light implementation. All right. Um, so any other questions, guys? Any other questions before we uh, – oh, one more. Um, hold on. Jim, um, do we have any documentation that we can send customers? Um, of course. Uh, Jim, I would absolutely uh, recommend you contact your account manager um, so that way we can get you the documentation that, you know, is, is most pertinent to what they're interested in. Um, but the other thing I will mention is the webinar, just like we're doing right now, we also do these webinars on a weekly basis. So every Wednesday we do a webinar um, for partners. We do webinars on technical uh, issues, um, how to build reports, dashboards. So it's a great way to be able to share information with your customers prior to even getting into a proof of concept or if they're running a proof of concept, it's great to be able to show them how to build reports. Um, so we can definitely send you some documentation, but you're always more than welcome to send uh, a link to verify.com to your customers and they'll have access to those webinars. Um, all right. Uh, in the interest of time, um, any other questions, we'll go ahead and answer uh, after the presentation. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and punt back to you, Dave, for our winner. Hey, thank you very much uh, for your contributions. And uh, Vic, uh, one thing I want to say before we announce the winner is uh, Verify has published a COVID-19 um, statement. Uh, and in two sentences or less, we're basically saying, if our customers need our help to extend licensing and things like that because of the expansion of teleworkers and the requirements that they have, 
Uh, we're happy to stand behind them uh, with additional licensing at no uh, additional cost for the first 90 days. Uh, we evaluate at 90 days to see where we are as a, a global or US-based um, um, position as to where we are with this particular challenge that we're all faced with. So we are here for our partners. We are also here for our customers or our joint customers, shared customers, however you like to state that. And Vic, I think uh, this guy, Carl Whitson, uh, is he our lucky winner for the- That is our winner for today. Congratulations, there Carl. Congrats, Carl. Um, your account manager will be in touch with you uh, over the next 24 hours just to figure out the details and the logistics, and we go from there. Uh, if there are other questions, uh, let me let us know. Uh, do you guys see anything come up yet or since uh, you handed it back? Uh, there's plenty of questions out here, Dave, but I think in the interest of time, we'll go ahead and address those afterwards with the folks that are asking them because, yeah, we definitely have a few questions out there. So. All right. Well, Vic, uh, Phil, thank you very much for your time and your contribution uh, to the audience. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to visit with us. Uh, our partner, I'm sorry, our portal, Partner Portal does have uh, the schedule of the uh, of the upcoming presentations, and uh, Carl, you're very welcome. So uh, everybody, thank you. Uh, be safe. Um, stay out of trouble, and let's make sure our customers uh, are taken care of. So with that, I think we're pulling the plug on this. Thank you. Thanks a lot.